Hello everybody, it's Serafina and I'm here with your daily tarot and astro insight. So we have arrived to the new moon in Pisces. Pisces is ruled by Jupiter and we actually have Jupiter traveling through Pisces right now. Not only that, but the, the moon and the sun who are conjunct right now and that's what starts a new cycle, right? A new moon. Is only Jupiter's only two degrees away from this, so that's technically a conjunction. So, all in all, this new moon is really positive because Jupiter brings blessings. Jupiter is a benefic, Jupiter is expansive. And so, you know, as a ruler of Pisces, I feel like that we're gonna be having lots of creative ideas, lots of abundance coming in, lots of communication coming in for us. Not only that, but this is these three planets are being sextiled by Uranus and Taurus. So there could be some elements of surprise, some blessings that are coming in for us. Another important um, uh, conjunction that's happening tomorrow at the exact time of the new moon is that Mercury, the Lord of Communication, is conjunct Saturn, who is the Lord of Karma. Saturn is really good at setting boundaries, at saying no. And um, as I mentioned, he's a Lord of Karma, so a lot of karmic issues are going to be absolving or coming into place right now. And so something that I was envisioning with this particular Mercury-Saturn conjunction is you know, that we're going to be able to voice things properly. Our, our mental abilities to, to voice our ideas or have analytical abilities is going to be heightened right now. And, you know, we have all this dreamy energy that's happening in Pisces. And so I see this Mercury conjunct Saturn kind of like um, a container. You know, when I start some sort of artistic practice, I find it useful to be able to have containers, whether it be a time restraint, or it could be you only using specific colors, or using a specific concept to kind of hold something. Because when you create boundaries, such as Saturn does, then that means that your creativity can just unfurl, right? And so we're creating those positive boundaries for ourselves. On the negative side, it could mean that we're being a little bit too analytical. Maybe we are dissecting things to the point where they lose they lose importance or meaning, which could be a very Piscean thing. You know, Pisces likes to, to float into the unknown, to dissolve, to surrender, right? And so it's very easy for us to receive lots of downloads, lots of messages through our dreams, through our conversations, through just, you know, walking through the forest. But the ability to hold them and to contain them is really, really important. Another conjunction that's happening right now in the sky, as I've mentioned before, is that Venus and Mars are traveling together and they're going to meet up with Pluto on Thursday. And so, you know, I've been talking a lot about, you know, Venus and her trajectory through the retrograde cycle. And I feel that ultimately one of the biggest lessons that Venus has had for us is the lesson of self-worth. And with our heightened self-worth, we are able to make better decisions for ourselves. We are able to attract the right relationships into our lives, whether they be romantic, whether they be friendships, whether they be business related, right? And so I feel that the theme of self-worth is really prevalent for a lot of us out there. And something that I also wanted to mention with this triple conjunction of Venus, Mars, and Pluto is the ability for sexual healing. So on the negative side of this, there could be more things coming out regarding to rape, regarding to sexual assault, regarding to, you know, just anything that's a misuse of power and will around things related to body, to sexuality and to will. But I want to talk about the flip side today. I want to talk about um, the ability to heal through tantric practices. You know, lots of us have perhaps sexual wounding in our sacral chakra that could be generational and could just have happened to us in this lifetime. And that doesn't mean directly that somebody sexually assaulted you, but it could mean any ideas of shame around sexuality. And so I feel that this transit, even though it can have some of its difficult aspects, it can also bring about our ability to connect to ourselves in our creative center, because that's ultimately what sexuality is. It's our ability to be creative, right? And if we, we research the sacral chakra, it is ruled by the element of water. And Pisces is the third sign of water. It's mutable water. 
So I just kind of wanted to bring that in. And these sexual practices um, can be done alone or can be done with a partner. But the thing is that there's going to be lots of passion right now in the air. There's going to be lots of things that are bubbling right now. So I just kind of wanted to bring that in. So if we think about, you know, all the planets are talking together right now. We have Venus, Mars talking with Pluto. We have Saturn and Mercury in Aquarius talking together. And then we have in, a, in, in Pisces, we have the moon and the sun conjunct. Two degrees away is Jupiter. And then we have Neptune there, who Jupiter is going to be meeting up with soon. And then all of these are sextiling by, by Uranus. So literally, we have all of the planets talking to each other right now. So what does that mean? These are portals. Things are being opened for us. And the beautiful thing about portals is that you can choose to walk through them if you want to. If you want to stay in your comfort zone, in your comfort levels, that's ultimately your choice because the spiritual path is one that is chosen consciously. That doesn't mean that sometimes we're going to have tower moments and things are going to come to shake us up. And ultimately, that's what Pluto does sometimes and Uranus too. So I just kind of wanted to put that all on the table. And, you know, just a word that came to me for this specific new moon in Pisces is the word Tantra. You know, Tantra, I researched it and it literally means to allume or to weave things. And it's the you know, ability to have like a, an open heart towards life experiences. And Tantra also means balancing, right? The balancing of the masculine and the feminine. So I also feel that that's been another gift that Venus and Mars have had for us of being able to balance these feminine and masculine energies within ourselves, if I've mentioned before. On a personal note, for example, I can tend to be a bit too masculine and want to overexert my energy and want to do too many things. So a personal, you know, lesson for me right now is to, you know, you know, be more feminine and to allow myself to rest, right? And so this can play out in different ways for different people within yourself or in your relationships. So the word Tantra, you know, it is balancing the scales between play and rest, between discipline and being wild between, you know, rightful communication and being able to know when to keep things to ourselves, right? And Pisces is the last sign of the astrological wheel. So it's the last new moon of the astrological year. And so I find that this is a liminal space. It's a liminal space between what has happened and what is yet to come. So allowing ourselves to be in these liminal and transient states without self-sabotaging, which is another Pisces thing, right? Let's not self-sabotage. Let's not go off into excessive dreaminess or escapism. And on the positive side, it could be us connecting more to the spirit realm, connecting more to our guides, connecting more to our ancestors, and being able to, to turn the channel on our transmission to receive the messages that this cosmic intelligence is trying to tell us and talk to us every single day. Okay, so let's pick some tarot cards. I would like to call upon the spirit of the universe that loves us unconditionally. I would like to call upon the spirits of this land, of this ocean and of this island, and I thank them for their presence and for their ancient wisdom. And I would like to call upon my spirit guides, angels, ancestors that come from unconditional love and light, and I thank them for their presence and guidance with this reading. Okay. What loving guidance is there for the collective today? What loving guidance is there for the collective today? We have the Nine of Swords. Whoa. Yeah. The Nine of Swords. What further guidance is there for the collective today? We have the card of strength. <clears throat> what further guidance is there for the collective today? We have the moon. We'll pick one more. What further guidance is there for the collective today? We have the Knight of Pentacles. 
Okay, and I'm going to pick one oracle card to complement these. What further guidance is there for the collective today? <laughs> we have the card of success. And it says Secret Spring. Okay, so we're starting off with the Nine of Swords, which could indicate that at a collective level, it could be that some of us are dealing with some issues of anxiety. Perhaps uh, the Nine of Swords speaks when we're like in a mental spot that is causing us to overanalyze and to almost be cruel with ourselves and with others around us. Yet what this person doesn't know is that right on the the sheet they have all the astrological signs and symbols there and so that is representative that we are always safe we are always held and we are always at play within the larger cos cosmic forces and this person is unaware of all the cosmic happenings and of god's will ultimately and they're like tormenting themselves and they're over analyzing things to the point where they can't sleep it speaks of a state of anxiety after that, we have the Strength card. The Strength card, as I've mentioned before, is ruled by Leo. And this woman, you can see that she is taming the lion. She is opening the lion. And so this could be us being able to work through our um, animalistic behaviors in the sense of like our impulses, our rash thoughts, our judgmental thoughts towards others, and, and being able to work through them and coming to a place of like inner realization we have the infinity up here right and so as i've mentioned before the the card of strength is saying we have enough tools we have enough inner resilience to be able to power through these really tormenting or anxious thoughts that, that are coming up for us another insight i'm getting right now is that pisces is really related to the dream world right and so I don't know if maybe for some of you, the dream world has been really strong right now, or you could have been receiving nightmares. And so what I'm interpreting from this is that perhaps the messages or the dreams that we're receiving are actually a, a, a symbol of our inner strength of the whatever difficulties that we're working through and the subconscious mind is working through them. Speaking of the subconscious mind, we have the moon card. The moon card represents fears. It represents things that are not seen, right? When we're walking, when there's a full moon, you know, even though she's illuminating things and we have somewhere to go, ultimately everything around us is still quite dark, right? And so this speaks of us working through fears or even secrets coming up from the unknown secrets coming up that we had not seen before. I, I didn't see it as like revelations. Maybe some people are gonna be coming honest about their true intentions about things, right? And so if we're speaking about the subconscious mind, perhaps, you know, we're receiving downloads and messages from our subconscious mind of working through things, working through trauma, um, and, and it's coming up, it's bubbling up and, you know, yeah, it's very influenced by the moon and it's very influenced by, by this Piscean energy. And last, we have the Knight of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles is someone who is diligent. The Knight of Pentacles knows how to continue forward in a way that is measured. He knows that good things take time. And so this is reminding me of Saturn, right? Saturn knows the importance of aging wine. You know, so it's like us being able to continue forward. So I feel that Maybe some of us are going through a little bit of a difficult time on the mental sphere. We are dealing with subconscious patterns, subconscious relationships. And there's a reminder here that we are held. We are held by the cosmos. We are held and, you know, it's literally a blanket on us. And that we're kind of wor over worrying um, ourselves because we have also the inner strength to do things. Uh, we're finding new ways of being you know, strengths strong within ourselves. And it's all related to fears and to subconscious patterns within our mind. And the message is to continue forward. Not only that, but that we're going to be successful. There's an element of success here and it says secret spring, like a spring of water. And so it's making me think of uh, like the Ace of Cups, right? And also spring that's coming up soon. So 
you know, we've been going through really difficult transits right now. Um, you know, a lot is going out in the outer world, a lot is going in our inner world. So I feel that like it's saying there's going to be an element of su success and maybe even like a new well, a new spring of water for us to be able to gather from. Okay, to finish, I'm going to be grabbing a card from this Oracle deck of Isis. And the reason why I chose Isis is because um, she is a goddess of alchemy. She is a goddess of magic. And she was highly devoted to her partner, Osiris. And uh, she teaches us a lot about the balance between the masculine and the feminine. So I thought that she would be great for this reading today. So, beloved Lady Isis... What loving guidance is there for the collective today? What loving guidance is there for the collective today? We have Mother of Life, Nourishment of the Golden Grain Mother. So we can already see that we have the sacred symbol of the Ankh, which is the key of life here, and it's being held by these two wings. So I feel like some of us are being encapsulated, and I feel that it's referring back to this initial card that we saw, that maybe we're feeling like things are a little bit out of control right now. So let's read, just to see what's, what's coming up with Mother of Life. <clears throat> Oh, let's see. Here it is. We can sometimes fall into existing and doing rather than truly living. We only know that this has happened when suddenly our life seems dry, depleted, filled with tasks, or it feels like we're stuck in a rut or habit that may have been comfortable, but is becoming stifling and suppressing. Isis, the mother of life, holds the ability to restore even the most numb, resistant, and difficult circumstances and people back into life. She calls to you now, seeking to bestow gifts of life upon you. Be bold and brave. Open your arms to receive. So it says discomfort and unfamiliar unfamiliarity is where life is attempting to break through you to reach the walls that you may have once created to protect yourself and now you need to either climb over demolish or at least open up with the doors and the windows this oracle brings encouragement and guidance for you to learn skills and practices that nourish you and your community it also asks for patience uh, in the same way that there is a growth cycle required before a child can become an adult and tap into the energy of the mother within to nourish him or herself, so too do certain life phases require patience as they mature. So I feel that that really speaks to this card of the Knight of Pentacles, which I've already lost. Here it is. This is us being patient. This is us being diligent. This is us knowing that good things take time because there are still fears that we're working through, subconscious patterns that are wanting to be rewired, and we have enough inner strength to be able to work through them, you know, but first we need to acknowledge that we're being held. We're being held by the divine feminine, basically, and 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 we're being clothed, right? So I feel that overall... This new moon in Pisces with so many changes that are happening right now with all the conjunctions that are that are happening in the sky is telling us that we're held, we're loved, and and and, and the healthy side of Pisces is a is a healthy surrender. It's a healthy surrender to the unknown. So may we all know what that is for us. Okay, everybody, I hope that this was useful for you, and I'll see you here tomorrow. Bye.